Good evening. I'm here to tell you all about one of Britain's greatest naval work, naval conflicts. They were in battle, the Spanish Battle of Trafalgar. In this battle, not for the last time, the British Isles stood against the vile and vicious dictator and prevented the islands from being, being overtaken. This happened on 21st of October 1805. In 1805, Britain was fighting in a coalition uh, with um, uh, the Hague of Coalition, included, which included Sweden, um, the Holy Roman Empire, which is what, what is now Austria, also uh, many of the southern Italian, uh, Italian kingdoms, uh, in a fight against, uh, fight against uh, Napoleon to contain his ambitions. So far, um, um, Napoleon had the um, idea that um, he could, idea that if he could amass a fleet and um, invade, um, invade Britain, he could potentially, with a massive invasion fleet, knock out one of the challenges uh, to his rule and uh, then secure basically his flank there and turn his attention east. So the idea was that he would instantly not be surrounded by enemies. So he decided to aim at the um, um, at uh, picking off uh, uh, Britain. But in order to do this, he needed to achieve naval supremacy, and that's absolute um, naval control over the British Channel. Because of the, um, the, lo um, the long um, operation of the Institute, now the many materials on the beaches of Britain uh, would take a while, and so it would need that they, the invasion fleet need protection from the, uh, the French fleet and the now the, the French and Spanish combined fleet. Um, unfortunately for Napoleon, uh, when it came to naval matters, um, we, um, Britain was very successful at defending its uh, and fighting its own corner, and won most of the uh, major engagements, naval engagements of the war, including uh, fighting against uh, French shipping in order to bring them, um, in order to wound the French economy. Um, so, uh, Napoleon had the idea that uh, perhaps the invasion of England could be affected more easily if the, uh, the very, if um, more a portion of the fleet. Uh, the defending of English, uh, British fleets could be lured away from um, uh, from Britain. With this idea in mind, the French and Spanish fleet was ordered to go and uh, to go and uh, lure um, Nelson's Mediterranean fleet away from the Mediterranean waters and to the Caribbean, with the hopeful objective of keeping them there long enough for um, uh, uh, for the um, French and Spanish fleet to turn back and come to Britain and defeat the um, uh, defeat the uh, defending ships and effect the invasion of Britain. Unfortunately, the plan worked it so far that Nelson followed uh, uh, the combined fleet to the, uh, um, to the Caribbean, but they also managed to follow the, um, to be close on the heels of the French and Spanish fleet back to Europe. But with this in mind, Pierre Charles Villeneuve, the head of the uh, uh, French Spanish fleet, lost his nerve and headed south to the, um, to the uh, Spanish port at Cadiz and stayed there for the rest of 1805 wondering his next move, which is where, the, um, where we are just before the battle. The person you're scared of is Horatio Nelson, who was born on 29 September 1758 in Burnham uh, Thorpe, Norfolk. Um, Horatio Nelson had uh, served a quite a long and varied career. He uh, uh, took part in an Arctic expedition at the, at the start of his uh, career, and he worked his way up from being a uh, midshipman on warships up to the way of being in command of, uh, of these warships. In the Battle of Cape St. Vincent in 1797, he had a reputation for um, um, being uh, insubordinate, but also quite daring. In that, during that battle, he disobeyed direct orders and pulled his ship out of the battle line towards the French fleet. But in so doing, he managed to get his ship in a position where he was able to simultaneously take over two French ships at once. So he got a reputation for daring and uh, success. So his insubordination was quite forgiven. With the Battle of the Nile, uh, uh, which uh, up to this point was the most famous uh, naval battle, um, Nelson's um, skills as, as a commander came out in that uh, he, um, uh, on the suggestion of the head of the squadron um, that was heading towards the, uh, the anchored French fleet at the Bouquet Bay, they allowed the Goliath's captain to take his own initiative and lead a second line of, French, of uh, British ships around the French one. And this necessitated uh, this um, uh, because of this manoeuvre, which um, Nelson supported, the, um, the, the the French fleet was decimated by being fired on by two different places. So we see that uh, his uh, faith in his um, um, subordinate captains was well placed. Unfortunately, he did have skeletons in his closet. Um, the Nelson, um, he was married, but not happily married. He had an affair with um, a woman called Emma Hamilton, who was the um, 
um, wife of the uh, um, of William Hamilton, who, who was the uh, British ambassador to Naples. And this relationship, which has actually been nearly covered up by Naples stories up to recently, actually, it's only just really come out there in the past 10, 20 years or so, 10, 50, 50 years. It's quite recently come to Pete Dockery and Nelson. Um, that this, he wasn't, he, um, it wasn't a small thing either, because he actually managed to produce an illegitimate child, uh, Horatia, as well, whose, whose um, existence was um, kept quiet in a, a quite um, hero worship of naval records about it. Here is this quite simple diagram. I'm trying to um, basically get the idea of how uh, fighting, naval fighting took place in this sort of time. The idea was that one fleet would land on one side and another would land up on the other, and basically that um, the two fleets would fire broadsides at each other, that's all their side cannons at each other, and basically they were doing this until one of the sides won. Of course, because of this manoeuvre, generally people who were either the fast firing or had the most guns, or probably both at this time, would actually win, or hopefully win. Um, but uh, many naval commanders recognised the uh, limited scope of this manoeuvre and decided to put through different plans in order to break up the stalemate. So Horatio's, um, Horatio's idea was to um, basically have two lines of attacking spears. You see here, two lines going towards one enemy fleet. The idea here being to penetrate through the lines on, um, on different sides and surround the middle of the, of the um, enemy, um, enemy fleet. And that would allow a breakup and the surrounding of the different um, segments. There'll be three segments if that were successful. And uh, hopefully the isolating and the destroying of the commands of the, uh, of that, uh, of the enemy. Um, so this was the general, this actually fits quite fairly well with the general shape of what I have at Trafalgar. I'll show you the exact shape. On the morning of the 21st of October 1805, um, the, um, the, the French Spanish combined fleet slowly came out of um, the port of Cadiz, and this, um, the um, British, uh, British fleet had been waiting for many months, and uh, it came as a bit of a surprise that it would happen now, considering they've been waiting for so long. They, uh, the, the fleet came out very gradually because the wind was very gradual, it was. So the, um, uh, at one point, the fleets would see each other. Basically lining up, but they couldn't. They couldn't do a huge amount, so it, it must look quite menacing with two fleets squaring up. Numbers-wise, there were 33 British ships and there were 41 French ships. So the British were outnumbered, outmanned, and outgunned as they went towards each other. The French and the Spanish combined fleet initially looked as though it was to try and make the Straits of Gibraltar and actually trying to escape the Mediterranean. But for some reason, and we don't know completely why, now Pierre Charles Villeneuve decided to turn around and engage the British fleet. At this point, Nelson tries to implement his plan, in which he put two spears, based two long lines of ships, or ships of the line. Ships of the line are the main, are the main um, fleet ships, which are 74 guns or more. These two, uh, these two spears were meant to uh, basically go into this line and um, surround and destroy whatever was inside those, um, uh, what was inside the formation. Unfortunately, because of our ship handling on the French and Spanish side, it wasn't actually a good. It, it was actually a good manoeuvre on their part because it actually saved them. Um, could have possibly saved more lives. The, um, the spears weren't actually able to perfect the manoeuvre in which they were able to surround and destroy the various ships um, because um, because of the bad manoeuvring of the combined fleet. Uh, there was like a, almost all at least two ships each, um, making a uh, well, making it potentially well, making it very dangerous for the, uh, the fleets coming in. Um, as the fleets came in very, very slowly, because the um, uh, because it was um, I say because of the lack of wind, um, at level forty-five, Nelson put out a flag signal. He used the uh, the uh, flag signals about putting up several government flags, and it was one of the um, the sailors hadn't seen before, and it spelled out: England expects um, expects every man to do his duty. I suppose if the plan, one uh, plan, um, now Span actually got through, um, did what it was supposed to, well, we won the battle when it came down to it. Um, no, there were no British ship losses. Um, there were 450 killed and 1,208 wounded. But of those killed, Horatio Nelson himself was actually killed. At, um, and he was uh, reportedly shot at 1.45 uh, by a French sniper from a surrounding ship. Um, 
And um, this has been, um, many people uh, question whether he, uh, he could have, um, well, he, he could have actually avoided that by not having such a frontal position. Uh, many people say that they think he was quite heroic in the fact that he was one of the first to actually charge into the battle. And he certainly didn't uh, try and hide himself away. He was quite obvious with his medals and decorations to walk up and down the deck, so he made quite an easy target. So you could say it was quite inevitable. Um, the losses on the French side were devastating. Uh, the French Spanish side. Uh, 21 French Spanish ships were captured, and one French ship was destroyed. That was, um, that was again, no losses on the British side, ships wise. But, um, so overall, this, uh, this battle brought an end to the invasion plot. Um, against uh, Britain and secured the British Isles uh, from invasion, but it did not win them the war, unfortunately. The war against Napoleon raged on until the great British victory, Waterloo, in June 1815. And for that, I thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs>this this was kind of a new strategy where they charged kind of head on <coughs> excuse me kind of charging head on into the lines do you not think this is a bit of a gamble because the cannons on a ship are typically on the side so if you're charging head on you have nothing to attack with and they have all of their cannons pointing at you do you like how much like well, persuasion do you reckon it took to get this plan kind of given the go ahead um you mean persuasion from the sailors and the captains too yeah I know how, yeah it's like this if you think about it if a cannonball were to fly against a ship from the side, that's going only a short distance through the ship. If it hits head on, that's taking the entire length of the ship. Yeah. So this seems incredibly risky. It's a gamble, that's the thing, but the, but the idea was you gamble you're going towards the lines, so when you got toward, uh, between the lines, you'd be able to fire on either side, on both ships at once, and do what's called breaking damage either side. So that was the payoff at the end of it, and also potentially surrounding different parts of the, the fleet. Of course, that didn't work out this time. Um, how it happened. Um, when it came to persuading the sailors, um, Nelson had quite a track record with all those battles before, so I guess you could say that he had quite a rapport with the crew anyway, and as I said, when he, with Battle of the Night, he listened to another person's strategy, which actually improved the strategy he used. So um, I think maybe with another commander who didn't really listen to, was quite, didn't really listen to his, um, his subordinates, he might have had a bit of a, uh, um, you know, more resistance. Um, but also, actually, the, one of the reasons why, actually, in, in this battle, um, the, ship, the ships were especially exposed with the going of the two spear formation it's because of the low wind. It actually took quite many, many quite many um, minutes to actually get into battle, and uh, the French ship, ships were able to find the British well before the British could respond. Um, so I guess that illustrates quite well, like you like say, the, the drawbacks of it. Um, but then again, we want the battle at the end of it. Whether that's for strategy or something else, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Here we go. If we, if we had uh, if we had lost the battle, would we would there be a sort of unified Europe with <laughs> with gay rights, with a fully emancipated minorities, um, and so many things, positive things, if if we had lost the battle? I think it all of a secret man. I don't think so. Um, I think the. Um, I think we could have put up with um, uh, some resistance um, after the, that battle because um, a point which I didn't want them to illustrate quite well there was that we had the defending fleet actually, which stopped the we had a blocking fleet, the home fleet by William Paul Wallace, which was actually stopping the majority of the stopping the entire invasion of people crossing in the first place. Um, so we we had like a backup in that way. That would of course have been smaller, obviously a lot smaller than the combined fleet, and maybe the combined fleet would have picked up a few captures from there. But I don't think I don't think the naval fighter would have been over. From Falcon, personally, and um, I think as for Lancan we have to see. Yeah, nothing about Napoleon. Uh, just, just, just to ask you, do you find that the view of Wellington is a better general or have Corey show Nelson? Sorry, who's... Uh, uh, comparing the view of Wellington with Nelson, who do you think is a better general? Napoleon or Nelson? Um, no, not Napoleon. No, Napoleon. Wellington. What is it? Oh, sorry. Wellington, sorry, yeah. Well, is that Wellington was a he was a good general, but he was, he was an asshole, <laughs> really. He was, uh, he was very rude to people, and he treated people like... Um, he, he had to be very convinced about new ideas, he did have to, but Nelson took new ideas on board very, uh, very quickly when he felt they had merit. Um, but 
So I was going to go to compare land to sea campaigns. I say, I'd see Wellington actually because he'd um, he'd fought for much longer and he played a lot uh, much a much more of a kind of like careful, patient game with the Great of War. And I think I think I think that was very patient. That's why he kept charging in straight away. Uh, I think um, there, there was just the chance to come for say fourth. I think yeah, a position reversal. I don't think. This is not an emotional question. Why we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be the judge of that. Why does nobody talk about that? When people talk about his, his battle, they talk about Trafalgar and Nile. Why, why are they sort of editing out of the Battle of Copenhagen, which is one of the biggest battles? Well, because I think they're actually attacking an official neutral country then, they were, um, as far as I remember. Or armed, I think they called it armed neutrality. So there was the case that the, we, we, Britain, made a controversial decision, well, our government made a controversial decision. Uh, because of uh, the Dutch um, having to give him the fleet of Napoleon early to his fleet, that we'd have launched a preemptive strike on Copenhagen and um, take the fleet out there. So I think purely because it's not, it doesn't appear as moral, but I don't think it's supported as much, you see. And I don't think, as well, I mean, because there's so much ridiculous stuff around it, there's this whole thing that apparently um, Nelson put his telescope up to his blind eye and they ignored his admirals and stuff. All, uh, most, uh, a lot of naval historians go on about that, but it's not proven anywhere, really. So um, I think people tend to find the other battles of uh, Nelson that well easier to easier to put through a bit more and more spectacular and more uh, final victories I think and more moral. Anybody have any more questions? Okay, uh, you got a question? Yes. Yeah. So in a naval battle, is it usually when you board another ship and occupy it that you take it over or? Do more casualties get sustained when ships are hit by cannons and sink or something? Um, it was very rare actually for, uh, for uh, ships to actually sink by naval cannons. It was. Uh, what would normally happen is, um, well, they would do what's called striking the colours, which is actually taking the flags down to show that they surrendered. Okay. Uh, and they didn't always have to board for that to happen. It was literally a case of how much, how much damage other ships were willing to take over. Um, I don't know how many, well, from what I've heard, a lot of the naval battles I've heard, I've heard the um, it's, I think for the most part, it's just literally the take damage part, which gets um, it literally just firing one, one ship submission which happens more often than boarding. Because boarding is you have to be close enough to do it, and also it's um, hazardous in that you lose crew who potentially be firing at the same time, and, and also maneuvering the ship. Mm -hmm. so, so, when a ship wants to surrender, it needs to lower their flag. Yeah, that's the idea. But well, that's the thing, but then you get crazy situations like in Chicago where people are, where the, most of the mass is gone, they have to make a uh, sort of like a, a tiny little mass just to kind of like show they're still fighting. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>